Millions of people around the world are dealing with some form of addiction, whether it be drugs, porn, alcohol, you know, all the cliche stuff. We all kind of have coping mechanisms to deal with things that happen in our lives because life can be hard sometimes and we don't always know how to deal with it. Or you could be like me who just obsessively makes YouTube videos just to feel that void, you know, just to feel something. Every single view and like just making me feel like I matter. But anyway, in this reality that we live in, I would like to thank personally TLC. TLC being an American network that shows us that no matter how strange our lives are, no matter how weird some of our addictions may be, there is always people out there that are way worse. And that makes me feel better about my own life. So I wanna thank you TLC for providing shows like people who wanna get married in three months, people that eat themselves to death. And in today's episode, I'm gonna be talking about a show produced by the very same people called My Strange Addiction. Now watching this show, I realized very quickly that my life isn't as bad as I thought it was. And it's great that they are willing to provide me this content. Now, if you can overlook the heavy editing, the clearly scripted elements of the show, the manipulation, also, if you overlook the empathy you have for these people who are clearly being exploited by TLC, you know, there's some good content there. You know, you can, if anything, it helps you feel good about yourself, which is what we all want, isn't it? We all want to feel whole inside. So I thought I'd start the episode with um, the strangest one I've come across out of all. And I've, I've watched a few of these, but this was the strangest one, I think, because it's one we've all seen. Even if you've never watched this show, it's definitely a clip that you've seen that went viral like if, a couple of years after the show aired it was everywhere it has millions of views on youtube on the tlc youtube channel yeah it's, it's very strange so it opens up we meet nathaniel my name is nathaniel i'm 27 years old and then we learn that he's in a relationship a serious relationship with his car who he is named chase and i'm in a serious relationship with my car one of the weirdest things about this and you know i i don't think i need to really say a lot about how weird it is i think it's pretty evident that we all think it's weird but the weirdest thing that they really focus in on on the episode is the sexual nature of their relationship. So he likes to have sex with his car. Morning, baby. My handsome man. And there's loads of footage of him kind of like lying underneath Chase, kissing Chase, caressing Chase. I say Chase as if it's a real person. His car. Let me just emphasize this. This is his car. He likes to have sex with his car. Poor Chase, so he just wanted to be a car. He just wanted to drive people. And now he's being molested on a daily basis by Nathaniel. Nathaniel is a fucking predator. I feel nothing but sympathy for Chase. Chase never asked for this. Chase can't speak. What's Chase supposed to do, you know? God damn it. And kind of press up against him and just and rub against him like that. One of his more bold positions is for me to be underneath him. He really likes that. Poor Nathaniel as well. I mean, clearly he has a psychological problem. His issue is actually known as objectphilia, which is a sexual attraction to objects, basically. Um, and it wouldn't be the only case of people that are attracted to their cars, but Chase clearly is not okay and he needs help. He also states that he's concerned that other people are gonna find out and he's gonna lose his job. I mean, if everybody found out, I'd be worried that it may affect my job. Which kind of makes you question why he would even go on the show in the first place. Part of me wants to kind of believe that this isn't real. You know, that Chase is, Chase and Nathaniel are just like made up and he's just, Nathaniel's just being paid a lot of money just to say all these things. But I don't know, it's definitely the weirdest one. My name is Carrie. I'm 53 years old. I'm from Colorado Springs, Colorado, and I'm addicted to drinking my urine. I'm addicted to drinking my urine. Okay, so the, the next person I um, wanted to talk about, and this is the most disgusting one I've seen, but this is Carrie. Carrie is 53, and just like you heard, Carrie likes to drink her own piss. And she guzzles that shit down like there's no tomorrow. So, you know, she, uh, give me one second. Oh, Christ. Okay. It's easier to drink than water. For the past four years, Carrie has been drinking nearly all of her urine. As if, like, 
she's like somewhat not strange for only drinking some of her urine, but not all of it. You know, I don't drink all of my urine. I might, I drink some of it, but I don't drink all of it. So I mean, I'm not that strange. Now, besides the fact that this is inherently disgusting, there's also, as you'll see, she does a lot more than just drinking. Aged urine is real good for a lotion replacement. You put it in your skin and it completely changes the texture, moisture. She does this thing where she like cups it to her eye and drains her eye, like she rubs her skin with it. It's a... Uh... Now again, I want to thank TLC for making my life feel better because I do not drink my own piss. Now she also uses it as toothpaste. She also uses it to cleanse her nasal passages. Now one thing they kind of talk about in the episode, which kind of helps you kind of have an understanding about Carrie is that she was diagnosed with cancer a few years back. Her addiction began two years after being diagnosed with cancer. I was diagnosed with malignant melanoma stage three and they told me uh, with the chemo i'd have a year to live carrie decided against chemo instead turning to urine therapy an ancient and long discounted practice to maintain health so that's kind of why she got into urine therapy like into drinking it it's not really emphasized in the episode it's kind of manipulated into her making her seem like an absolute psycho not that drinking your own urine isn't strange because it fucking is but I would have some sympathy for her because she's trying to come up with a way to treat her cancer. But they keep showing her drinking the fucking urine and it's just, it's disgusting. I don't know if it's really, if you can really categorize it as an addiction because she's doing it because it helps her feel better. Like it, it's as a treatment in her own mind. So I don't know if you could argue it's a, if it's an addiction or not. I mean, it's fucking disgusting, but it's not like she's having sex with a car. So I mean... Casey, I'm 26 years old. I'm from Fayetteville, Tennessee, and I'm addicted to carrying around my husband's urn. Whether or not that's an addiction, I don't think so. I, again, like the show really doesn't kind of draw a line in terms of what's considered an addiction or not, but her carrying around the urn, obviously it's kind of weird, but you know, you can understand it because it's obviously her coping mechanism. She's clearly lost someone that she loves dearly. And at this point I was watching going, wow, this must be really hard for her. But then it gets very fucking weird very quickly. And I didn't want to wipe wipe him off because that's my husband. I don't want to wipe him away. Um, so I just licked it off my fingers, and here I am today, almost two months later, and I can't stop. It took me a couple of minutes to kind of really kind of digest, if I should use that term, digest what she was doing, and she's she's basically committing cannibalism. Like she's eating her husband. She. Like a, like a fucking dippy bag, a dippy thing. It's, a, it's like a fucking fun dip, you know? Just in case you're wondering, if you're ever wondering what a dead body tastes like that's been cremated, it tastes like rotten eggs, sand, and sandpaper. But I've grown to love that taste. I love the taste of my husband in my mouth. <laughs> now clearly, right, I think it's fair to say like she clearly needs help and she's clearly being exploited by these producers. Like they're happy to go in there with the cameras and film her. And again, you would question like, is this, is this person for real? Like, is this a real life person? You know, is, is, is this, a, this has to be a script. Like that's not really, that's not really a person in there. You know, that's just some powder, it's just some sugar. She's dipping some sugar. Her biggest concern is that she's gonna run out of husband to eat and she's not gonna know what to do. When I got Sean back from the crematory, he weighed six pounds. He is closer to five pounds now, so I have consumed right at a pound. Instead of producers trying to get her some sort of professional help, they just get her to tell her family and friends, which isn't really gonna help that much. I mean, and then they react kind of like, what? But then they're supportive. She recently shared this secret with her mother. When Casey actually told me that she was eating Sean's ashes, it was like, I couldn't speak. I really couldn't do anything. I mean, it's like I was just frozen there. So I think one lesson can be learned is don't drink your own piss. If you lose someone close to you, don't eat their remains. Don't have sex with your car. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. And, you know, what I would recommend doing, if you're having a sad day, if you're feeling low, if you feel like you need to pick me up, besides watching my YouTube channel, obviously, stick on TLC and you will feel so much better about your own life. 
Well, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed. I might do some more reality TV because it's fun. And, you know, I like looking at strange different things and I like commenting on them. And it makes me feel good, like I've said a million times. So thanks for watching. Thanks for liking and subscribing and sharing. Please continue to do that. Um, I will be still making more and more. This is actually video number seven, I think, which is mad to think I've now made seven of these. Um, and I hope that you're enjoying the journey with me and I hope that you're willing to partake in more. And um, who knows what's in store for 2022. But there'll be a lot more videos coming, so please do subscribe if you haven't already. Please do tell everyone you know. Everyone, please, everyone. Make sure everyone knows. Tell your grandmother, tell your dog, tell your sister, tell your friend. When you're praying to God, even tell him if you believe in that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, so that's it. Peace out. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.